In this video, we're going to go over the overview of this report. So what we have here is this is um, version three is just our for our internal note. You could make it whatever you'd like. GA4 organic traffic conversions and template sample data. So when we copy the template, we usually put the client's name over here, whether it's, you know, Dr. Smith or Smith Legal Group. I do it in capital letters just because for me, it's just how we do our notations and, and how we just do our naming things over here with the client name and the client URL. Now it says here what this is, GA4 organic traffic and conversion data for the last six months. Why six months? You can certainly edit this report to have whatever months you want. I like six months because it shows the client where they are, where they're progressing, where they're not progressing, and it lets them get an overview of very specific data. It's a lot easier for them to get into than GA4. For those of you who've played in GA4, you know it's a quite different than Universal Analytics, and for many clients, it's very, very difficult for them. So over here, let's take a look at what we have. So the first thing we have is sessions, and I have over here that mid-month data is incomplete. You can edit the template and slide that up a little bit, and the reason is because here we are in the middle of December, or beginning of December, November, and if a client sees this, they're going to flip out and wonder why today is November 12th, and why am I only seeing this number? They're not going to realize, oh, it's the middle of the month. So we have the sessions here. These are not broken down by um, um, by location in the sense that you could certainly put a filter on this for whatever state it is or town it is or country, or wherever you'd like. We don't just because it becomes, there's a lot of micromanagement in doing that for all these reports and we just don't do it, but you can. Top sessions by city. This is important for the client just so they know where people are coming from and we like to have that for them as well. Now, let's look at conversion events. So when you look at KPIs for, for non-e-commerce, you're going to say, well, what are the ways that people can um, get in touch with your business or your client's business? And number one is going to be, they are going to, well, number one, they're going to go to Google My Business and call, which is one way. Um, way number two is that they are going to go to the website. And then once they're on the website, they're going to either make a phone call or they are going to submit a form. So in this case, what we have, conversion events by channel. I think it's very important for clients to see what the conversion events are. And when we set up the data, I'm going to show you, you know, where this comes from um, in another video. But over here, you can see here that this client, so the appointment form is submitting for an appointment, and here's a thank you page for a contact request. And you can see that, you know, they're pretty even on where they're getting their, um, their interactions from on their website. Now, over here, their organic search is getting, you know, probably 20% more than their um, paid search. And organic search over here is getting a hell of a lot more than their paid search in terms of appointments scheduled, which is what they want to follow. So we might tell this client, do more organic search because it seems that people who are getting on this website liking what they're seeing and they are converting. So just something to think about. Um, grand total, I like to have it so they know, um, but we could break it down. So if they want to know how many new clients they have, they can certainly say, oh, well, in this six month time period, we've had you know, a hundred new clients. Well, at least this way they can start breaking it down where these clients came from. Now, same thing over here. I like to have the conversion events by month, not so much because just to track, well, you can certainly use it to track ups and downs and for, um, you know, seasonal data, if that's appropriate for your client. But what I like over here is that we can actually see each month though, what's going on, um, for what types of conversions. So here we go. Um, you know, November, Mm, I wonder if it's still on, probably not on par here for November, just because it's, um, but then again, you've got holidays in November, Thanksgiving's coming up. So, you know, depending on what type of business it is, that might make sense to you. But just this way you could say, here are the conversions that I'm getting. And you can see over the course of the month, is something up, is something down? Did you start an SEO campaign here, uh, you know, in, in May or in June here? And then, well, it looks like it's not working because you're not getting you know, appointment forms or whatever it happens to be, but this way you can actually track. Um, one of the things I would avoid, and we'll talk about it later, is really keep your, is having too many conversion events. Keep your conversion events focused because otherwise you're looking at too much data. Over here, you can go ahead and change your, you know, your name to your branding and your logo. And this we actually had when we were just testing this, I removed um, in the actual template just because it just gets complicated. Certainly if you want to change it and switch it to a, you know, um, a year template or a one month template, you can certainly do that. But this in the actual template is removed. 
So in the next video, we're going to talk about where we got the data from. So if you want to edit it later, you can certainly do that uh, and make it you know, more customized for your business.